in the end of the day, a technical writer has to write as little as possible because we don't actually want people to read our content. We want people to reach it easily, uh, le- you know, get what get the answer that they that they need to their question, and uh, move on to what they really need to be doing is their work. So uh, I don't think we are writers. I think we definitely communicators. And in, in fact, we've just been rebranded at Sage as content experience uh, writers. So so you could say, or, or content experience people, uh, you know, so, so we're really taking the customer through the entire experience. But today, we're not just writers of, of documentation. We also do UI, we do emails, we do all the touch points that the user um, has with the product is, uh, it goes through our hands. And uh, so, yeah, I don't think we writers, I think the main thing we are is communicators. Welcome to the Knowledge Base Ninjas podcast. Where Gowri Ram Kumar of Document 360 finds the best SaaS self-service knowledge bases in the world and then interviews their creators. Let's get started with today's episode. Good day, everyone. Welcome to Knowledge Base Ninjas podcast. Today with us, we have Avi Chasen, technical communicator at Sage. Welcome, Avi, to the Knowledge Base Ninjas podcast. How are you doing today? It's great to be here, Gary. Great, great. So hope you're having a good day and uh, enjoying your uh, documentation. For sure, always. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Now, just before we dig a deep dive into a lot on your current processes, just help us understand how did you get into this uh, p- profile and uh, what m- motivated you to become a technical communicator? Sure. So, uh, so I had an interesting journey, but I'm sure many have had this journey because um, when COVID-19 hit the world, uh, I was working in incoming tourism and uh, we all know what happened to that industry during, uh, <laughs> during yeah. Corona times. So um so I was like, actually just like, um, just had nothing really to do. And uh, I started like just talking to people to, you know, I wanted to, I wanted to take some sort of a course just to use the time um, smartly. And um, I, I spoke to a couple of people and uh, many of them were technical writers. And I started like just, you know, aggregating the results and saying that people in technical writing seem to be really like engaged, really happy, with their chosen profession. So, um, and it was like a little bit of an obscure thing. So I started looking into it and I took a course and never looked back. Uh, it's been really like uh, exactly what I, what I needed. Like it's made for me. So I'm really happy that I, I got to do that pivot. Great. So in a way, thanks to COVID, otherwise you wouldn't have explored yeah. the new area. And uh, <laughs> brilliant. So definitely it's a different story, Evie. <laughs> Great. So yeah, sure. that's a great introduction to yourself. And uh, so how, how are you doing so far? Well, so uh, the first job I took was at BMC and uh, that was wonderful. It was a big product, a really like a, a legacy software that, that was moving from on-prem towards SaaS. And, uh, and I got to do a lot. I got a really like, great exposure. I got a lot of I got to do a lot of different things, APIs, microcopy, obviously documentation for SaaS and on-prem. Um, we migrated to a new tool. For, uh, we migrated all our content to Madcap Flare, which was also a great experience. And then uh, the, a new opportunity came up at Sage, and uh, I just grabbed it with two hands. Um, uh, really, like, uh, was able to, you know, just take all those skills that I had learned from the course and from BMC and move it into this new project uh, at Sage, which is re- really exciting, great people and a wonderful product. Great. I did look at your LinkedIn profile to get an idea of what's your past history and your uh, career journey. And uh, I was really um, interested to know why you call yourself as a technical communicator. Sure. So. Uh, when I did, when I learned uh, technical communication, um, so one of my lecturers was Leia Guren, and uh, she used to tell us, "Don't sell yourselves cheaply. Don't call yourselves writers because we're not just writers." And um, I'll take a, a minute to like expand upon that. 
Uh, most of what we do is not writing. It's quite a funny thing to call ourselves writers because most of the time we're sitting with the SMEs, uh, we're sitting with product, we're sitting with our managers, we're sitting with our colleagues and we're talking and it's a lot of discussion. And uh, a lot of the time, you know, you got to go into what the users are thinking and what the users want to see. So you have to really be a people's person and a communicator and a communications person. And uh, I started to actually realize that my entire career had been building up to this because I was a paralegal. I used to sit with clients one-on-one, uh, uh, -on -one, uh, a lot of correspondence. I, I worked in tourism. And that was also a lot of like, you know, understanding the, the customer's journey and, the, and helping, you know, visitors have a great experience to uh, our country. Um, and I took that on and I said, you know, it's all about communication. Um, in the end of the day, a technical writer has to write as little as possible because we don't actually want people to read our content. We want people to reach it easily, uh, let, you know, get what, get the answer that they that they need to their question, and uh, move on to what they really need to be doing is their work. So uh, I don't think we are writers. I think we definitely communicators. And in, in fact, we've just been rebranded at Sage as content experience uh, writers. So, so you could say, or, or content experience people, uh, you know, so, so we're really taking the customer through the entire experience. But today, we're not just writers of, of documentation. We also do UI, we do emails, we do all the touch points that the user um, has with the product is, uh, it goes through our hands. And uh, so, yeah, I don't think we writers, I think the main thing we are is communicators. Just moving on to my next question, um, I think uh, you. I wanted to understand: Is there any difference between audience and persona? Like, if there is any difference, help us understand what the difference could be. Well, I'll start. I think I understand the question: Is there a difference between audience and a persona? Mm -hmm. A persona would be um, what we would build. Um, a theoretical person or theoretical people who would be looking at our content. Um, so for example, we work in the accounting space. Um, so it would be a CFO or it would be an accountant or a bookkeeper. Those are the people that are working with our product. Um, the audience uh, could be a collection of all the personas that, um, that we are writing uh, our content for. I guess that would be, yeah, I've never thought about it. That's a good question. Great. So maybe mine, uh, just in conjunction with what we are talking and how you call identify yourself as a communicator rather than uh, a writer, what would be your ideal persona when you're creating content? I guess um, the ideal persona is uh, the one that we build. Um, and it has to be in conjunction. We have to run it through a number of levels, whether it's marketing or, or, or development or, or product or really like, um, you know, actually also talking to our users. Uh, you, you, you learn so much about like uh, our users. I was just sitting um, with someone uh, on the weekend and they do SDR, they're in sales. And they were asking my wife some questions. My wife's actually a bookkeeper. And they said, you know, just from like this short conversation, I understand so much more about how I have to approach, uh, you know, my sales goals. And, and, and what she had probably been doing was all sorts of corporate style training and uh, not really ever speaking to a user. And this was like just informal conversation, but it was actually a, speak as a conversation with the user and she got to know so much uh, about like how how this uh, you know how to do her job so so that's the one aspect personas and also just to add to it do you use any strategies or tools to identify these personas while creating your documentation content I think something important to keep in mind um, I think a persona is something that marketing people work with uh, very heavily and uh, perhaps us as uh, content and technical writers, uh, technical communicators, maybe don't focus on uh, enough. But um, 
we don't have any like personas up. I've never worked in an environment where there's personas up on the wall and we keep on looking and reading the persona and thinking this is the person we're writing to. Uh, although I must say what we what we do do in Sage, which I think is fantastic, is uh, there's a uh, we, we meet with clients and uh, those meetings are recorded and we, we listen to their pain points and we listen to what they're going through. And when I'm writing, I really like, I look at it, I close the computer, I come back to it, to it the next day and I say, okay, I'm not me, the writer anymore. Now I'm the user. And what stage of the, uh, you know, am I, am I with the product? Am I a new customer? Am I reading the introduction section? Am I a more intermediate or advanced user? And I, I look at it and say, I'm not the writer anymore. I have to look at it now and be the user. And it's actually, you, ha you have to have a lot of uh, empathy to, you know, to be able to step out of your own shoes and mm -hmm. say, okay, now I'm the CFO. Now I'm the bookkeeper. If I were reading this, would this be useful to me? And would this help me uh, get to my solution as quickly as possible? Great. I really like the way you put these contents. And um, I think you truly mentioned this in your LinkedIn profile, like you like to um, break down complex terminologies or complex uh, structure into easy to implement uh, process. And I can clearly see the way you are addressing these questions are reflecting that, uh, Abby. Uh, just to talk a bit about your processes in Sage, uh, can you help me understand what teams do you generally get involved while creating contents? Um, you might have very briefly touched upon these in the previous questions, but uh, anything more you can add? Yes, actually, this is, uh, I think, one of the most fantastic things about working at Sage is that. The, the writers or the communicators, I have to be careful to call ourselves writers now, <laughs> but we are, in, we are embedded into teams that we're not our own uh, content uh, writer team. We actually embedded into dev and PM and UX. And um, each team has um, a little representation of all the different departments uh, that go into the product. So when a release, uh, our cycles uh, work in three week cycles. And when the cycle finishes, when the sprint finishes, we are all on board and the feature can only be released when everyone's had their input. So um, I really like this model. We all know that when you go to the office, you, you want to socialize, you want to have a chat, you have lunch together. And you know, at Sage, we all like sit together and we all like socialize with one another because we aren't uh, alienated from, we aren't siloed from one another. So the, the company culture uh, like has this enriched, enriched value. Uh, you know, you go to work and you, you sort of, you know, everyone, I'm in touch with QA, I know the dev guys, I know the PMs, I know uh, the managers because we're all in it together. So uh, this is something that's really, really valuable. Um, I think some companies fall, fall into like a, a danger of like, the, the, the writers are the people at the end. When we've done all our work, we'll just give the things to the writers and they'll do something on their documentation site, which no one looks at. But here, yeah, it's a completely different approach. We want, they want our opinion on the UX. They want our opinion on the UI. They want our opinion on every single piece of uh, wording that goes out to the customer. So this is, this is like revolutionary for me. It might be common, but it's a, a really unique way of working. Great. So that means you're in the process right at the early stages. So you kind of okay. know what's coming. And so you can also well be well. And of course, you did mention about uh, customer empathy and putting yourself in their shoes. Brilliant. Super. So I think with that, I'm done with some general questions. Now it's my rapid fire round. So who okay. have you learned the most about documentation in your career? So I think um, so many people, but I'm going to choose uh, my manager at BMC who taught me most about actual writing. And, you know, writing today is not actually writing. It's talking to the user as if they were right in front of you and um, just putting it down in words on your keyboard. So, um, yeah, I think I learned, I learned really the most about actual writing, direct communication, 
from uh, from my manager at BMC. Great. Would you like to name him or her? <laughs> uh, he knows who he is. <laughs> okay, that's that's fine. <laughs> now I'm sure you read quite a lot of content. Uh, can you share some documentation related resources that you have? consumed recently and found it to be very interesting that you can share with us today? Well, for sure. I, I'm actually like in, in, the, we, in the process, our team, we're in the process of moving our documentation again uh, to Madcap Flare. Um, you can see a trend here. Um, <laughs> and I must say using the, the, the Flare documentation is, is a pleasure. Like often we say in our meetings, oh, we should really ask them how to do such and such. And then if we actually just sit down for a few minutes and look at the documentation, it's all addressed. So, you know, I really appreciate that Madcap as the documentation experts that they're trying to be really put a lot into their own uh, documentation website. So hats off to them. Okay, great. So one, my last question is, what is that one piece of documentation related advice you would give to a 20 year old self? Uh, <laughs> I think you got to keep on learning all the time. You know, when I grew up, the idea was you go out, you get a degree and that's your career, but that is completely over and we're never going back to that ever again. It's impossible because today there's so many sources of learning and uh, you can just sit on YouTube and, and learn a ton for, 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 you know, for free. And uh, you know what? No one asks you today anymore. Where did you get this education from? Did you get it from Harvard or Princeton? They yeah. just want you to know it. So if you can do it, that's great. We just yeah. need to move move ahead. And technology is moving so fast, you know, you, you just cannot stagnate. So uh, keep on learning all the time. Absolutely. Very well said. In fact, your actual learning starts after you finish your graduation, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> 100%. <laughs> Great, Avi. So, it's nice to hang certificates on the wall, but <laughs> you know, they're insignificant in the end of the day. you got to keep on learning all the time. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Very well said. I'm very happy to have you as our guest today because there's so much of insights you've shared with us. And all the best for your current migration. I know it's not a simple task, so good luck, and I'm sure you will rock it. Anything else you would like to add? Um, that's it for me, uh, just to anyone who's interested, um, getting involved in the field, it really, if you've got a good command of, of English language and you're interested in technology, hit me up on LinkedIn. I'm happy to help. I've helped a lot of people pivot just like myself. And, uh, I think it's the greatest gift you can give to someone is, uh, help them like get into a new career. Great, great. And also whenever anybody is planning to visit Israel, Avi is the best person. <laughs> he can give you all <laughs> exactly. <on> the place. Hundred <laughs> uh, <100%. laughs> percent. Lovely. Have a lovely day and we'll stay in touch. You too, Gary. All the best. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks for listening to today's episode of the Knowledge Base Ninjas Podcast. Please head to iTunes, rate, and provide honest feedback on the podcast. See you next week.